This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. I call on private and local order of the day number two. Thames Coromandel District Council and Hauraki District Council Mangrove Management Bill, first reading. Right bill. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Scott Simpson. Mr Speaker, I move that the Thames Coromandel District Council and Hauraki District Council Mangrove Management Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Local Government and Environment Committee to consider the bill. Sir, mangroves and their proliferation around the beautiful coastal shores and tidal estuaries of the Coromandel and the Firth of Thames have been the subject of much debate, discussion, deliberation and dithering over the last 20 years or so. It's with pleasure this evening that I rise as the Member of Parliament for Coromandel to introduce to the House as sponsor this local bill on behalf of both the Hauraki District Council and the Thames Coromandel District Council. The councils have not taken this step lightly. The two councils are predominantly rural and coastal in their character. Each Council has a small ratepayer base, which means limited resources are available to undertake all the functions required of local government. Both councils also have a ratepayer uh, age demographic that is heavily skewed to those in the plus 65 uh, year old age group. Typically, these are people who are often retired and living on fixed incomes, which in turn only emphasises that every dollar taken in rates must be a dollar well and wisely spent on their behalf. This is a bill that provides for a public process allowing the two councils to develop an approved mangrove management plan. The councils are merely seeking the ability to create their own plans because the Waikato Regional Council has spectacularly failed over a long number of years to manage effectively or efficiently the vast proliferation of mangroves within the two councils' coastal boundaries. This failure has now so compromised the amenity quality of people's lives that it's at a point where something must be done. I congratulate the councils for taking this initiative and for boldly stepping up where the regional council has uh, so obviously failed. Mr Speaker, this bill is not about why the mangroves are there or what has caused their proliferation or where they are. This is a bill merely about allowing the councils to develop their own mangrove management plan. Some years ago, the Waikato Regional Council struck a special mangrove removal rate on properties at Whangamata. It's raised in that period of time something over $1.5 million, but less than 10% of that $1.5 million has actually been spent on the physical uh, management of mangroves. The vast bulk of that $1.5 million has been spent on lawyers, consultants, resource consents and appeals, uh, the writing of reports and the review of those reports. No wonder the people of Whangamata want action and these councils, Hauraki and Thames Coromandel, have via this bill found a way through the malaise. A streamlined, cost-effective, efficient community-based process is required to ensure that councils are mandated to implement a plan that reduces impediments to human amenity and allows access to improve recreational values. The District Council's desire to see limited resources more effectively utilised is at the core of this bill. The bill empowers each council to prepare a draft mangrove management plan in relation to the coastal area of its district to achieve and maintain acceptable levels of mangrove vegetation. This is not a bill that is aimed at removing or eradicating all mangroves. That's absolutely not the purpose. And I know that there will be some who will criticise it as some kind of mangroved, scorched earth policy. That simply isn't the case. This is a bill to manage mangroves where they impede human amenity. Under the bill, a draft plan would be approved through the special consultative process under section 83 of the Local Government Act 2002. 
The bill provides that the councils, if they agree, may prepare a mangrove management plan in a collaborative way, including by adopting a single integrated plan for both districts, should that prove to be a better and more efficient option. The plea that this bill makes is to give the uh, responsible control and management of mangroves to the local communities that know and hold dear their harbours and tidal estuaries without the financial burden imposed by current processes. The Lower Firth of Thames is an internationally significant tidal wetland protected by Ramsar Convention and is an important wintering ground attracting thousands of Arctic nesting shorebirds such as the Bartail Godwit and the Red Knot. The seaward advance of mangroves in that area since the 1940s has considerably reduced the feeding habitat available to the birds. Community concern about the impacts of mangroves dates from the early 2000s, with notably the concerted effort uh, since 2005 by citizens uh, of the Whangamata community to address the spread of mangroves and to ensure the restoration of harbour amenity. Mr Speaker, people naturally think that mangrove management shouldn't be that hard. To the south of my Coromandel electorate in, uh, and around Catty Catty, Tanners Point and Kauri Point in the Bay of Plenty regional uh, council area, they seem to be able to manage mangroves without any great uh, issue. North uh, in, uh, of my electorate, Auckland City seems similarly to be able to manage them. But throughout the Waikato Regional Council area, there seems to have been no political uh, or elected representative will to manage mangroves. It's as if the personal eco-political agendas of those involved have been allowed to get in the way of sensible, prudent, pragmatic management of an issue that on the face of it is so simple, but one which has caused so much angst and heartache to say nothing of the costs to the citizens, ratepayers and good people of the Hauraki and Thames Coromandel districts. Mechanisms for allowing a transfer of authority under the Resource Management Act from regional to district councils do not <coughs> adequately address the timing and resourcing concerns. The process undertaken so far under the uh, Resource Management Act has been costly, time-consuming and has simply not delivered outcomes. The Thames Coromandel District Council has, amongst all our local authorities around New Zealand, the largest proportion of absentee ratepayers. Many of these visitors, Mr Speaker, together with resident, the resident population, enjoy the amenity, both ecological and recreational, offered by the peninsula's various harbours and estuaries. They are indeed a key feature that gives the district its distinct character. This bill is asking the House to let the engaged communities of Thames, Coromandel and Hauraki look after their special harbour and estuarine areas without the burden of excessive process and regulatory costs. Mr Speaker, in conclusion, I want to acknowledge uh, with thanks the Thames, Coromandel and Hauraki District Council uh, officers, the mayors, Sandra Gowdy and John Tregeter, uh, the local communities and citizens of Thames, Coromandel and Hauraki for their relentless focus in mangrove management issues. Mr Speaker, this is a simple local bill being promoted by two uh, hard-working and caring local district councils, frustrated by years of inaction at a regional level. I'm very pleased, as the local member of Coromandel, to be able to sponsor this bill into the House this evening, and I commend it to members for their favourable consideration and support. Yeah. Oh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker... Uh, the Honourable Nanaima Huta. Actually, a former member of the...